Okay, hi, this is Michael Ellis. Um, today, I'm going to teach you how to grow cranberries. Now, why would you want to grow cranberries? You know, they're at the store or whatever. Well, um, cranberries are actually a good survival food. And the reason why is because they're very high in vitamin C and um, other um, antibacterial or um, uh, C constituents, chemicals, and um, they're easy to grow. Well, I don't. I take that back. I, I don't know if they're easy to grow or not. Uh, this is my first time actually attempting to grow them. But um, if you have any leftover cranberries from like uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatnot um, recipes, um, grab a bag full of them. Throw them in, if they've if they've been previously refrigerated. They should be good for. Um, for planting, um, otherwise throw them in the freezer, the fridge, um, leave them for about a week or two, um, up to a month, uh, then take them out and we'll begin our process of actually preparing a planter uh, for starting the seeds um, and growing the vines, uh, which, um, which there are, from what I found out on various sites on the internet, there are very specific conditions to which cranberries will grow. So um, you have to prepare uh, the, the site um, as one would be similar to or um, as a uh, marsh-like uh, area or bog. Um, the soil needs to be uh, acidic particularly and it needs to be sandy and have layers and whatnot. But, um, but uh, you don't have to have, I found you don't have to have a marsh uh, specifically to grow them. You can actually grow them in your yard or in a container um, if you have the right conditions. So uh, what we will need to um, actually plant ours um, are potting soil. Now this soil I have uh, seeded with beneficial uh, fungi. Uh, specifically um, I've uh, uh, I've uh, seeded them with uh, mycelia from um, spawn of uh, oyster mushrooms, uh, white button mushrooms, and uh, wine cap mushrooms. And you can get uh, you can get spawn on the internet, um, even on Amazon. I, it has them, I guess. But um, you can get it on the internet. Uh, it comes in a little bag full of spawn. Um, on various materials like wood dowels or uh, popcorn or like popcorn corn kernels or whatnot and um, and uh, you can take those out and multiply them in coffee grounds or whatnot or uh, rye or s some other seeds seed or um, other type of material um, in which they'll grow um, and um, uh, wood chips even are a good one too um, if you want to grow them in mulch um, but uh, I've seeded them into this uh, potting soil so uh, I'll hopefully create a good symbiotic uh, nature uh, or symbiotic uh, uh, site for for uh, these uh, cranberries to grow um, so now that we have the potting soil uh, we're going to need um, a container to grow them in and here I've gotten some uh, I've actually ordered these because I use use them for uh, mixing resin in but uh, you can use um, you can recycle some uh, takeout containers um, you know if you clean them off well and they're good material um, you know you can reuse them and recycle them um, by turning them into planters or seed starting uh, sites um, you're also going to need some sand, or as I like to call them, baby crystals. <laughs> you can get sand from, um, you know, like a, like a hardware store or something, or, or a, uh, some nurseries have sand, some don't. Um, you can also get sand online, or, well, it's, I don't know if you, that's practical or not, but hardware stores or, you know, place um, stone and, um, uh, and uh, uh, compost and dirt. Uh, suppliers uh, would probably have sand too in various types. Uh, it's not important what kind of sand necessarily you need, just a type of sand for um, 
uh, creating the surface for the seeds to sprout on. Uh, you're also going to need, if your soil is particularly um, basic, you're going to need an acidifying agent. Um, you can use vinegar um, or lemon juice. Um, I uh, particularly in this case I'm using vinegar because it's just what I have on hand. And what I found is that if you use vinegar, you do it one part vinegar to 16 parts water. So, um, and they're just, just uh, off the shelf distilled vinegar. So that's a uh, one ounce vinegar to one cup of uh, water. And, um, and, uh, you remember you want to add your, um, your acid to the water as you know, in chemistry. So we'll just do that right now. And, um, that creates our, uh, acidifying agent that we will add to the soil. Um, you want to get some sort of uh, pH meter. Um, in this case, this is a garden store one that we've picked up that I've picked up. Uh, you can also use pH strips or um, or whatever else you have on hand for measuring soil pH. Um, um, or you can just wing it. You know, just add some acidity to the soil. Uh, peat also works good for uh, acidifying the soil if you mix it in with the soil. Um, I don't think this is actually working. I tested it out earlier, um, but so I'm just going to kind of wing it. Um, I know I'll try and use it to see if I can affect the soil. But uh, right now, the soil is measuring at about um, pH of 7. And uh, you want to actually, you can see it's 7 there. I don't know if you can see it from there, but uh, it's 7. So um, you want to add a little bit, a little bit of acidifying. Uh, material and uh, stir it up. We have a spoon to stir, stir the soil up um, and uh, see what the pH comes out as. Just a little bit. And uh, not much change yet. I don't think this is working actually. Uh, it's not moving at all. Still the same. Yeah, I think this is busted. Anyways, um, so yeah, just add a little bit of acidifying agent in to um, because uh, cranberries require uh, an acidic environment, and they like their feet wet, so we aren't gonna poke holes in the bottom of these. Uh, we're actually gonna end up putting them in um, uh, plastic resealable bags. Um, so, and we're going to do that because, um, number one, we want, if there's any insects in our soil, and this is soil I'm reusing, which, um, technically they're not supposed to, but, um, I haven't, um, really grown much in them, and I haven't had insect problems with it, so I think it's good soil. Um, yeah, um, so, um, so in this, in a case of, um, this is just what I had on hand, uh, in a case of, um, don't do as I say, not what I do. Um, you, you want to use fresh compost, um, uh, or fresh, or fresh compost or fresh, uh, potting soil that has been sterilized. Um, um, but if you, but if we use the plastic bags, um, that'll contain, um, any insects that may occur, um, in the uh, environment from uh, migrating out uh, to other plants uh, in your house. Because uh, in this case, we're doing indoor planting or at least seed starting um, operations. So, uh, so yeah, once you have that all mixed, mixed in good, um, now we have our sort of acidic soil uh, we're going to, uh, where did I get this? Oh, uh, we're going to process the cranberries eventually. Um, so we'll, um, so we'll create our, our, uh, our uh, containers then. Um, um, so for our containers, oh, that's why I got the spoons out here. I'm scooping this too. Uh, for our containers, we're going to do about, um, we're going to leave a little room for sand on top. 
Um, we don't want to um, leave it completely com uh, soil or compost. Um, it suggests, uh, I've seen it suggested to use gravel on the bottom, but I've also read elsewhere that gravel does not really do much of anything other than take up space for the roots to grow. Because uh, the roots kind of, uh, I don't know, um, kind of trim above gravel, I think is what it said. So, um, so it doesn't, so it actually prevents the roots from going down. But I don't know for sure if that's, I don't recall exactly if that's what I read or not, but, um, uh, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, as I do this, um, I don't know what else I have to say. Um, so yeah, so, so you do want a little bit of sand, um, at the top. So, so there are actually very specific instructions on to have, like, clay and, uh, and the sand and gravel, but, um, this should just do for the, uh, average home amateur, <laughs> uh, So we're just starting the seeds. So it does require a little bit of sand on top to start the seeds. I'll just kind of mix that in so there's some acidity to it. There we go. So it's a well drained, um, part sand, part soil. Um, so I think we'll mix that in a little bit more. We don't want entirely sand at the top. We just want it to be super well drained. Just a kind of sandy uh, layer. And, um, okay, so, so we'll do this later, but, um, so, uh, to press, process our, sorry, you can see, okay, to process our cranberries now, these are cranberries that have been sitting out all day, so and my mom was going to throw them away, uh, so, score, um, so to process our cranberries, we just need to get the seeds out, so I'm just going to cut them in half, and um, I believe in nature's processes, so um, I'm just going to throw them straight on the, the uh, soil like that. And oops, there's a seed. And there's a seed. Oh, look at all these seeds. And I'll uh, let them rot down and uh, ferment and let the alcohol um, uh, treat the uh, seeds like as they would if they were... Uh, falling onto the ground in nature. Um, uh, some uh, uh, gardeners recommend fermenting certain uh, seeds to, as a sort of a treatment or soaking them in hydrogen peroxide uh, as an artificial fermentation or, uh, or as a, like a, a scarification sort of operation to, um, to uh, like activate the, the um, the uh, growth of the seed, or the activation cycle of the seed, um, towards um, rooting and, and uh, germination uh, overall. So, um, so I'm a big believer of uh, just uh, letting the seed kind of you know get get um do its own thing uh, and and the fruit um, as much as possible. So. Uh, we're just going to let nature take its course on a few of these and uh, see if that doesn't help the plant come out a little bit healthier. So I'm just going to cut up a bunch of these and let them go you know, um, to try and get as many as we can because uh, we have an abundance of unwanted cranberries and uh, so we'll take advantage of that. Um, um, so each cranberry has about like four um, 
No, it's actually it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, there's almost like a like a cross like symbol, or like a um, I don't know what to call it. It's like a wedge, uh, four wedges if you cross if you cut crosswise. Um, if you cut at the equator of the, the uh, fruit, there's like four um, uh, four wedge like. Um, cavities and each one contains a seed. Um, like if you cut an apple uh, crosswise, you'll get a get a five section and like starlight symbol. Like a like a um, like a pentagram almost. So um so yeah so I'll get these and leave them there to ferment and create the um, conditions right for germination. So um, that basically fills the top of our container, so we have a nice, um, so I'm going to spray them down with water. And um, so now is our final, okay, we bless the, <laughs> bless the, um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the, the seeds and they're soon to be germinated. Okay, we put them in our bags. Oh, I forgot to mention you also need a Sharpie. That will be useful to have a Sharpie on hand. Or other marker. Or other marker, I should say. I'm not promoting anyone marker. Company. So we write cranberries. On today's date, which is the 25th, I want to say. Yep. December 25th of 21. And it's like 11 o'clock. <laughs> Probably 11.30. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, so there you have it. And we seal the bags because we want to trap the moisture in and prevent bugs from flying out and going places. So, um, so we'll leave it like this. Now it's a uh, fruit fire fruit fly proof if uh, fruit flies occur um, because we have fermenting fruit so if like fruit fly eggs come come uh, uh, activated in the fruit or something uh, which I doubt they will I mean it grows in a bog and everything you know there'd be fish and insects and everything all over that um, at least the kind that occurs in Wisconsin does um, so so this is uh, set to uh, be placed in a warm sunny spot um, where it can uh, do its thing so uh, thanks for going through this journey with me and uh, hopefully this helps you uh, maybe it's a fun project you can do with your kids um, or if you're a young adult yourself uh, you can take this on uh, as a fun experiment uh, see what happens uh, maybe you can uh, have some nice uh, treats for your family in a couple of months. Uh, so um, have fun with it and uh, be safe. As you can see, I'm wearing safety safety glasses uh, because uh, we're working with uh, chemicals, not vinegar, but you know it's a chemical. Uh, it is acidic and it will um, actually hurt your eyes, but. Um, so, um, so yeah, working with chemicals, you always want to... Okay, so, um, so we have our acidified soil in this bag, and, um, oh, it's hard to see. Uh, so, we can, so, we can, so we have our acidified soil in this bag. Um, I'm going to transfer some into the container, like this. This is our second container that we found here. Whoops. Acidified necklace. See, uh, see, here's some of the spawn uh, that came on a little dowel peg. And, and, and the rest is on uh, uh, seeds and popcorn sort of stuff. So. Popcorn corn. Yeah, and I always put down the newspaper. Put down the
Christmas paper. We're gonna put that to the side for right now. Actually, no, I don't. Yeah. Put that to the side. Oh yeah, to the side. Hey, can you see that? Okay, there you go. You can see this. Okay. Good shot. All right, so now we're gonna start cutting our cranberries again. Get the real ripe ones if you can. Those have the best chance of uh, fermenting. Yeah. Nice and ripe. Look at that beauty. Nice and ripe. Perfect. Alright, oh, well, three things. Alright. 
Alright, let's just go in here to the window. So there's a chair over here. Alright, that does her.